This time last year Apple paid $3 billion to acquire a company called Beats that made overpriced headphones and ran an unsuccessful music streaming business. This acquisition made Beats co-founder Dr. Dre the first hip-hop billionaire at the same time as it baffled many observers of the industry. For example, Benedict Evans, a seasoned analyst, tweeted, If you think Apple's lost it, Beats deal is confirmation. If you don't, it's perplexing. Few really convincing rationales. This columnist was likewise puzzled. Apple normally designs and makes its own kit, and if it wanted to do headphones it would certainly do better than the Beats products. So the conclusion had to be that if Apple didn't want Beats for the headphones, it had to be the music streaming service that it craved. And so it has proved. We have just discovered, in a roundabout way, just how much Apple wants to get into the streaming business. It turns out that two U.S. federal agencies, the Department of Justice, Dodge, and the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, have been examining Apple's business practices in relation to its forthcoming music streaming service. The Verge, a well-known tech website, reported that Apple has been pushing major music labels to force streaming services like Spotify to abandon their free tiers, which will dramatically reduce the competition for Apple's upcoming offering. Dodge officials had already interviewed senior music industry executives about Apple's business practices, but it appears that the FTC, which oversees competition, has taken the lead in recent weeks. It also turns out that, according to The Verge, the Dodge has had a resident monitor based in Apple's corporate HQ since the company was found guilty in an Epic antitrust case that had alleged that the company had conspired with publishers to raise the price of Epics to consumers. Apple was fined $450 million and is appealing, so maybe the Dodge Minder is hanging around just to ensure that there is no more hanky-panky. Are we surprised by this? Not really. Or at any rate, not as much as we would have been 15 years ago, when tech companies were really cool. We are now almost prepared to accept that the Apples, Googles, Facebooks and Microsofts of this world are really just behaving like the huge industrial conglomerates of the past. Of course they employ smarter people, pay them better, exude coolness, provide chic, funky work environments, free massage and sushi bars, anyone? And they are led by executives who have good bedside manners. But at base they are just huge capitalist enterprises that exist to provide wealth for their leaders and shareholders. So the next time you see Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg, just remember that what you are looking at is John D. Rockefeller V2.0.